You tell Haley I am not talking to her. All right, she's just a backstabber. I don't want to talk to Rod either. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm going to do this stupid interview. All right, everyone, this is John Daly. I'm here as always with Bernie Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. This is actually a very special episode. Yes, it's it our is. 50th episode. So, is anybody, 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 no, nobody, okay. All right, fine. So, so for this episode, and I, I still don't know how we were able to pull this off, Bernie, but we somehow managed to get the biggest guest we've ever had on. Um, you all know him. Uh, this guy has been out on the campaign trail. He's working hard to make America great again. Um, sir, uh, are you there on camera? We, we're seeing a background, sort of an interesting right, background. Right, oh, here right, we go. All right, Bernie, I'm going to hand it on over to you. Darren set this up. Did it work? He's very good with the cyber. He's very good with the cyber. Darren, is this is this the way? Okay, we're good. We're good. Excuse me one second. Excuse me one second. I just have a, l a little bit of water. Oh, we're having a security issue. We have a security issue. The probably Antifa's here. I think Antifa's here. Okay, go ahead. Before go we ahead. get started, do I call you Mr. President, Mr. Trump, Your Holiness? Well, you should call me Mr. President because I'm I'm the president, uh, as you as you well know. Uh, but why don't we? You and I have been very very close friends. So call me call me. What what do they call Kim Jong Un, the Supreme Commander, uh, Supreme Leader, something mm -hmm. like that? Leader, leader. You know, Dear Supreme Leader, I like that. I like that. Did you know he's allowed to kill uh, reporters? Did you know this? Did you know this? I can't do anything. It's really sad. It's really sad. I, I have to tell you. I can't wait to get back in because I'm going to be the dictator. That's what they're going to call me. It's going to be fantastic. Well, let me ask you a question. You, you won New Hampshire handily a week and later. And I have to say about New Hampshire that Nikki Haley had an unfair advantage and I kicked it out from under her because her name is Nikki Haley and the state is New Hampshire. So a lot of people, a lot of stupid people were thinking NHNH, which gave her an unfair advantage, but I still won. I still won. Even you with that, 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 she spent $37 million of the Koch brothers' money to make signs up NHNH. And See that we still won, and you and you won, and you won Iowa a week before that by a crush, big crush chair and Ron de Sanctimonious, or as I call him, Ron the backstabber. But I said I would retire that, so I so, have retired. Uh, calling him in those bad names. Let me ask you a tough question: Why do you suppose so many people are so madly in love with you? Mr. Well, you know what? There's so many incredible reasons. Uh, first of all, we had the greatest economy in the history of America. Uh, we we did. Uh, we, there were no wars. There were absolutely no wars. Highest unemployment ever. Highest Latino unemployment. Highest Black people unemployment. We did an absolutely fantastic job. People were making more money under me than they'd ever made in the history of the United States. And that's what this country is all about. And that's when I get back in, people are going to be so happy. They're going to be so happy. I mean, what, what has Biden done? What has Biden done? We have rampant unemployment. Uh, things are a mess. He's got no legislation through whatsoever. You know what I mean? I came up with Infrastructure Week and then he stole it and he put the bill through. I was going to do that. I was going to do that. I was going to do the Chips Act, but we, you know, we had COVID. We had the, the Kung Flu from Wang Chung, which was horrible. You know what I mean? And they, they did that to me on purpose. China, terrible people, the Chinese, great takeout, terrible people. But they made me look bad, and that's why I didn't get anything done. And Jing Jinping, great guy, by the way, very smart, very smart, one billion people. He unfortunately had to do it. He told me he didn't want to do it, but the Chinese people and all these people were against me. They had to let it out of the lab. So this is why things look bad. But we're going to make it up in the next term, and I am going to be there to – be your retribution, Bernie. I'm going to retribute everybody who's been against me, look sideways at me. I may have to even be retribution for you because you haven't been terribly nice to me. You've noticed that. I noticed that. Yeah, I don't appreciate that. I, I need people to fall in line here, you know, if you know what I'm saying. Even some people at Fox haven't been great to me, but we're going to fix them too. We're going to fix them. What do you mean by that? We're going to fix them. We're going to fix them. I'm going to get rid of MSNBC. We're going to get rid of CNN and certain people at, you know, at Fox won't be there too much longer. So, so let me ask you this. Do you think you're going to win the presidency again? You of sound course. Pretty, 
Of course. Listen, sleepy. You know, Joe Biden's walking. Like, I have my beautiful White House press room set here. But Joe Biden's walking around the White House. Oh, man, where am I? Oh, come on, Chesparilla. Oh, gosh, man. Oh, God. He doesn't even know where he is. He doesn't even know where he is. He's so old. He's so old. They discontinued his blood type. Did you know this? Did you know this? There's no blood for Joe Biden, but I've got plenty of blood because I'm a stable genius. And my and Bernie, you know this. Sure, you're an investigative journalist. My uncle, John Trump, taught at MIT. MIT for 40 years. You know this. He was a super genius. I'm a stable genius. And they have my blood at MIT in a vault, in a vault, because uh, my blood is his blood and his blood is my blood. And this land is your land. It was made for you and me, primarily me, primarily me. And that's why I'm going to be back again. And I'm going to be dictator on day one. But every day will be day one. So it'll be like Groundhog's Day. So I'll be able to be the dictator every single day. And we're going to get things done. Uh, we're going to get things done under the second presidency because we're going to get rid of all the terrible, terrible people. And we're going to have the best, the best people, because I you always know, get the best people. You know, your supporters say that uh, Joe Biden, who you just talked about, let me be gracious. They say he's not playing with all 52 cards. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You believe that. I, you know what? You know, he, he's up there and his little brain just, you know, just peters out, you know, just kind of stalls. And then he says things that don't make any sense. He says things like uh, during the uh, Civil War, they had uh, ramparts and airplanes. And I, you know what I mean? That's terrible. He's, he's just not there. He's just not there. I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I mean, everyone says he's such a nice guy, but he's a terrible, terrible president. Terrible president. And no one campaigns. No one campaigns the way I, I campaign. I was just in Las Vegas this weekend. We had over 50, 60, 75,000 people. Who does Joe get out? He gets out a bunch of geriatrics at the assisted living place who go, oh, I went to high school with him. I mean, it's a mess. It's really sad. And nothing against old people. I just don't like them. They're irrelevant. <laughs> Let me ask you this. And, and forgive me, Mr. President or Mr. Former President or Mr. Holiness or whatever. Let it's me a ask great you thing. That would be good. If, if by some chance, I know this, you, you don't believe this will happen. If by some chance you don't win mm -hmm. in November, will that be because the election was, was stolen? Rigged. It was 100% so it's already stolen. We just have to steal it back. That's what's happening right now. It's already stolen. They want people, they want to make it possible to vote by mail, vote weeks before. What is all this making voting easy? I've read the Constitution. It clearly says we have to make voting difficult and only for smart people. It's very, it's right there in the writing. And by the way, once I'm in, we're going to get rid of the Constitution. It's very, it's very restrictive. It's very restrictive. So but if we so, do have to keep it, which, sorry, go ahead, Bernie. So, so that thing about only smart people can vote in person, right. that's in the Constitution, right? That's now, what you, you have to read between the lines. You have to read between the lines. Like my contracts, you have to read between the lines. There's Got stuff it. that's there, but you're not going to see it automatically. But the smart people see it. And that's why everybody agrees with me on all of this. You know, and that's why I should be president for life, Bernie, president for life. Once I'm back in, I'm not leaving. And by the way, I want you to know this. Even the Democrats think that me being president for life is a good idea. I got a call from crying Chuck Schumer, crying Chuck. And he said, I hope you get life. See that he's on board, too. No, I don't think he meant that. But before I throw it back to uh, John Daly, um, let me ask you this. Let's make some news today. Let's make some news. I make news every day. I don't know about you, Bernie, but I make news every day. Who are you going to pick as your vice president? Shukandu? Nobody. Nobody. Where in the Constitution does it say I have to pick a VP? Where is this written? Look what happened with the last one. What a total, what a total idiot mistake that guy. That guy is so boring. He has a snooze button on his sleep, but you know, on his uh, smoke alarm in his house. You know, you know what? You know what? You know what his wife told me. He's so boring that her intimate name for them when they're, you know, doing it is get off of me. So let, this is how boring this guy is. I don't want anybody like Mike Pence. I, maybe Carrie Lake. She looks like Peter Pan. I like her. I'd like to have, I'd like to have Ivanka. 
I'd like to have Ivanka, but she's in the, you know, she's got me in the friend zone. So until we rectify that, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, somebody told me, uh, Christy Noom, Christy Noom. She's very attractive. She's very attractive. I'm hoping for Alina Haba, Alina Haba. But if I have to pick a VP, but who says I have to have a VP? I don't need a VP. I'll be my own VP. You know, you seem so, how shall I put it? So reasonable. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very reasonable. Today, why Today. Are you, why are you so mean to Nikki Haley? Well, you call her a bird brain. You said her her dress wasn't so special. It was a probably Marshalls or TJ Maxx or something like that. Yeah, the the New York Times said it was a bitchy post victory speech after mm. New Hampshire. Well, why are you so mean to Nikki Haley? Well, first off, I'm a sore winner, but secondly, you know what? She she quit. Three weeks before the election where Nancy Palooza got the uh, Congress back in and made me look bad. You know, I gave her a job. I gave her a job. And this is how she thanks me. She runs against me. And the Koch brothers gave her a half a billion dollars. How do you spend that much money in Iowa? Did they buy the state? You know, and they still lost. And they still lost. I don't understand, Nikki. You know, in, in, in a country where I have done more than any other president in history, and then Nikki Haley runs against me, I need total loyalty. I need total loyalty. I shouldn't even have gone to Iowa. Have you been to Iowa when it was 50 below? I had to go there. It was horrible. It was horrible. I don't ever, the best hotel they have there is like the Holiday Inn Express. I mean, it was, it was hell, Bernie. It was hell to be in Iowa when it was that freezing. Believe me. John? Take Supreme Leader Trump, I do I have some questions. Uh, you, you have been charged with 91 felonies. Are you concerned about going to prison? And, and do you feel like you would do well in prison? Well, first off, I don't think I would go to prison. But secondly, if I do go to prison, I would organize everybody in that prison. We would have, on day one, I would get the black gangs together with the Aryan Brotherhood, and we would have a fantastic, whatever my period of time is there, because we would make that place sing. And probably within a short period of time, I'd be the warden. I'd be the warden because when they have the elections for the award, they'd probably have me as the warden. And on top of that, they're not going to put me in jail because then they have to put the Secret Service in jail. That would never, ever happen. But if it did, I would do an absolutely fantastic job running our country from uh, what are they, Folsom. I don't know whatever where they would send me, but I hear the places are like a country club. So I could probably play golf and not miss a beat and do a fantastic job. Excellent, excellent. So lots, lots of minority groups uh, seem to be moving in your direction. Um, yeah, African American, exactly. Hispanics, maybe even some Jewish voters who normally tend to vote Democratic. How do you explain your strength within the Jewish community? Well, within the Jewish community, I've always, I love, love, love the Jewish people. Uh, my CFO is in jail. He's Jewish. He wears the Yamaha on his head. In fact, I only like guys who wear the Yamaha in the accounting department. If I go in there and I see somebody who doesn't have that on, I don't want them. I don't want them. But the Jewish people love me because they know I love Israel. I love Israel. And remember, I moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And, you know, that's this is why the Jewish people love me. And, you know, they love me so much, I have to tell you, because my name, Donald J. Trump, they think the J stands for Jewish. It doesn't. It stands for genius. It stands for genius because that's what I am when it comes to the Middle East, to the Middle East. Total, it, it, you know, looking under Biden, it's a complete disaster. They're they're doing terrible things. But under me, everyone was was very, very happy. And people know I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I've read the Bible a lot, a lot. I've read the Bible and Jesus. I don't know. A lot of people don't know this. Jesus was Jewish. He was yes. Jewish. Did you know this? No one talks about this. No one talk. I just found out last Easter he was Jewish. So I think that's a big deal. And that works in my favor. As far as the Latinos, the Latinos, great people, hardworking people. They know I want them here, but legally, legally, you know what I mean? Because, you know, the illegal ones come over. They're like baby machines. You do not want them crossing the line like Swiss cheese. And I'm watching and Abbott is doing the best he can. And I'm doing the best I can to make Mike Johnson hold up that bill for the 14 billion until I get back in, which will be very, very soon, which will be very, very soon. John, let and me jump in just, 
Go ahead, me, sorry, buddy. Just for a very, very brief second. Uh, Mr. President, you said that Jewish people were, were Yamahas. Yeah, Yamahas. No, it's good. Yamakas. Yamakas. Oh, Yamakas. I knew that. I knew that. I was testing you because you're Jewish. I just wanted to see if you'd uh, interrupt me and correct me, which is really rude, I have to tell you. It's very rude to correct me. I apologize. I right. apologize. You're not Jewish, are you? My name is Goldberg. What do you think? Well, I just thought you just liked the way it sounded. I use it for show business reasons. Exactly. My real, my real, well, name, is, movie studios. My real name is Biff Carter. Biff, you look like a Biff. You look like a Biff. You've done a great job. You've done a great job, Bertie. Absolutely fantastic. You know, I really liked your sports reporting in the day. You did great stuff. Kind you of worked it. with Brian Gumbel. Brian Gumbel. He was very good. I liked him. He was one of the good ones. He was one of the good ones. <laughs> John, back to you. Sure. Uh, well, I got one more question, Supreme Leader, and then I'll, I'll hand it back to Bertie. So there Absolutely. was a, a recent report uh, while you that while you were president, your businesses received about eight million dollars from foreign governments, most of it coming from China. China. Um, China. What you'd like to <laughs> thing you'd like to say about that? Well, you know, the thing is, I was on with uh, Brett Baird and some blonde woman on uh, Fox News, and they asked me about that, and I and I said, listen, eight million dollars, it's not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Have you ever stayed at one of my hotels? I mean, breakfast at one of my hotels is like five hundred dollars. So you know, uh, so if you've got people staying at your hotels. I didn't. By the way, by the way, I didn't tell them to stay at Trump International in D.C. They did that on their own. The Saudis and the Chinese and all of these people. They did that on their own. So they spent eight million dollars in four years in hotel fees. So I can't help it if they, you know. Those mini bars, I have to tell you, uh, probably the greatest thing I've ever invented. If you open the door on the refrigerator in the mini bar, you get charged. Is that the greatest thing ever? You don't have to take anything. Just open the door and we hit you with like 50 bucks. So that's why I didn't do anything with that money. It's totally legal. And in fact, a lot of that Chinese money is still in China in the Chinese bank accounts that I have, which shows you that I actually understand the global economic market. I have money in other countries, which is actually a smart thing. If people say, I've got conflict of interest. I go, no, 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 no. My money's in another country, so I want to make it work. Excellent, excellent. Makes, makes perfect sense. I'm going to throw it back over to Bernie for, for one more question. Mr. Supreme Leader, just between us and the hordes, hordes of people watching this exclusive interview. By the way, what's the best way to pronounce the word exclusive? Exclusive. Just exclusive. between us and all the hordes of people watching this exclusive interview there we go i know this is incomprehensible to you i i understand that but what do you say to the people who just don't like you well listen but you've known me a very long time people have always disliked me because they dislike success they disliked it when i had atlantic city they hated me in atlantic city when i was in new york they hated me in new york when i went to dc they hated me you know what i mean i'm universally loved and universally disliked but i get things done and i get things done my way and on day one i will get things done i will go we're going to get rid of obamacare on day one and we're going to replace it with trump care and i already have the market and the tagline it's going to be trump care We'll tell you when you're sick. And on that alone, we're going to save a lot of money. A lot of money. Believe me. Believe me. Finally, one last. This is a very tough question. Mm -hmm. Is it about Putin? No. Okay, good. It's very tough, though. Is that okay with you? I, you listen, I've never not ever answered tough questions. I'm a tough questions guy. I just don't like them. But go ahead. Who do you think is the greatest president of all time? That, that's well i have to, you know what i used to say i have to tell you something i have to tell you something i used to say i'm the greatest president in the history of presidents other than the late great abe lincoln whose wife was what maybe a three maybe a three and he certainly wasn't attractive so you can't get me on looks on that one and the economy was a lot better under me than it was under abe and you know his the country divided under him but i united the country which i think is so important so i'm gonna have to say me i'm gonna have to say me donald j trump and it's gonna be back again and then like i said it's gonna be president for life President, we're going to change the Constitution or we'll just get rid of it, whatever we have to do. But I will be back. And even though I was the greatest president, I will be even greater. And I know there's like a, so I'll, they'll have to come up with a new name, like a new word. 
a new word for me, uh, but I'll be the greatest, greatest president in the history of America. We're going to make America great again, again. So it's going to be Maga Gaga, uh, which is going to be on the new hats. The Maga Gaga will be, look really great because it'll extend it. I can hardly wait, Mr. President. I, I know you can, Bernie. I know you can. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this summer. I'll be barnstorming all over. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Listen, much. I can talk for the next few hours. I, my, my tea time's not till like 12 noon, so I got plenty of time if you just want to talk. You know what I mean? I got nothing else to do. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say before we go? Uh, well, I just want to say that I'm so excited to be on your podcast. I hear you have five or six downloads a month, which is absolutely fantastic. But this particular episode will be your most downloaded, most viewed, most reviewed, and probably most criticized because people will say, oh, Bernie sold out. The Bernie sold out. It's, it's really sad, but you didn't because you hit me with the incredibly tough questions, and I didn't even break a sweat. People are saying a lot of the rallies, oh, Trump's so sweaty. I'm not sweaty. I'm not sweating. I look absolutely fantastic on this teeny tiny camera that Barron set up uh, on the on the laptop. Uh, what is it? It's a laptop? It's a laptop. He knows the cyber. He knows the cyber. He's very smart. He does. He's like eight feet tall. I swear he grew overnight. Can you believe this? He's even taller now. It's crazy. But so things are great right under me. And I know a lot of people uh, are, are crying and they're upset. By the way, when I was president, people were happier, women were more attractive, men, from what I understand, higher testosterone lovers, levels. Tucker talked about this. Testosterone's way down under Biden. So I just want to make it clear that things are going to be absolutely fantastic when I am back as president for life. So this is very important to me personally. You like me more now than you did before we started this interview because you indicated that you were not a fan of mine before we started. I never said I never said that. I never said that. I've always thought the most you I think you're absolutely fantastic. I always like the sports reporting. I just don't like you when you say things against me. I don't like when Tucker says something against me, but when he says something nice, I like him. And when you say something nice, I like you. You see how this works? A lot of people don't get it. A lot of no. people don't get it. But if you say something nice, I like you. You say something mean, I don't like you. <laughs> No. As, man, president, as our readers know, I've always been a huge fan of yours. Huge fan. You've been, been so you've even come to visit me, John. You've That's even right. come to visit me, which I think is fantastic. I gave him a cheeseburger. He loved it. It was fantastic. Wonderful. The greatest so you're cheeseburger not, America's ever produced. <laughs> so you're not a narcissist, you don't believe. No, no, I don't think so. And, and I, by the way, I have heard you say that to, uh, I've heard you say that on Fox that I'm a narcissist. By the way, what is a narcissist? But tell me, tell me what a narcissist is. Right? Someone who is, someone who, who is off the charts in love with himself. And you know what? And all these self-help books that I hear about, you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. I love myself. I love myself. What's wrong with loving myself? Do you know what I mean? Because if you don't like yourself, things are bad. But if you love yourself, things are good. So all I've done is take loving myself and expanded it to really, really love myself. And I think that's a good thing. And if more people love themselves, it would be a wonderful, wonderful place, uh, America, or any place for that matter. You know, I, can't, I just can't help but thinking how harsh you were towards President Biden. Sleepy Joe? At yeah. least I didn't mention Carmel Harris. Come on, give me a break. I've been very, very nice. And listen, for the most part. But he's, what did you just what did you say her name was? Carmela Harris. Oh, Carmela. Yeah. Okay. I like to call her Carmel because that's her skin color. It's like Carmel. And I love the little caramels we have here at Mar-a-Lago. Bernie, I want to invite you to come to visit. I want you to come down here to Mar-a-Lago. You would absolutely love it. You would absolutely love it. It'd be great. I'll give you a tour. I'll give you a tour. Some people say you cheated golf. You know what? Some guy actually wrote a book. Yes, on he that. did. Yes, he did. And I barely know that guy. I barely, he was my coach for five years, but I never met him. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. All right. <laughs> Anything else? 
Anything <laughs> else? I think, Mr. President, this has been very enlightening, been very informational. We appreciate very it. Information, very listening. informational. I've asked all the tough questions, and I think the people watching know to vote for me and not Sleepy Joe, who has destroyed this country, a country along with the leftist, Marxist, socialist, fascistic fish sticks that are running this country into the ground. And the headline, I mean, we actually made news. We've got to get the Associated Press on this. There will Absolutely. be no vice no presidential nominee. No, 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 no. We don't need to do that unless they force one on me. But you know what, Bernie? Let me ask you a question. You were well informed. John is well informed. Who should be my VP? Who should be my VP? Not a white straight man. How about that for openers? Well, we already made that mistake. So uh, I'm, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I hear what, what about Stephanie uh, uh, Stereophonic? What about her? Uh, you mean Elisa Stefanik, the Congresswoman? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Didn't, didn't I say that? Some people might think she's, don't take this the wrong way. I mean, know exactly. that, that she's too much like you. You need somebody to soften the edges around the Trump persona somebody so maybe somebody like nikki haley nikki yeah. i'm just i'm just i'm not suggesting well, you know the upside of that is we can get some of that coke brother money and some of the uh the uh wall street bros who dumped in all that money to her you know that might work and, and i'll tell you right here it won't be vivek it won't be vivek you know what i mean every people keep saying to me it should be vivek that I'm saying every time I see this guy, his teeth get bigger and his hair gets higher. So it's not going to be him. Uh, Tim Scott. Tim Scott. Tim, Scott. Tim, Tim Scott. Scott, the senator from South Dakota, from South Carolina. Oh, the guy who kissed my butt on stage the other night. Yeah, he's okay. I don't really like him. He don't really like him. You, well, you don't really like him? I don't really like him. He's, he's well, annoying. He's very well, annoying. If you had to pick a vice president, will you tell us who you'd pick? Well, I, you know, I, like I said, I like Carrie Lake. I think she's very nice, but she's never held elective office, which is probably a good thing. Then she doesn't know the rules. Then she doesn't know she's breaking them, which is always a good thing when you have somebody in elected office. Mr. Mr. Supreme Leader, that, that would be a bad choice because he thinks elections are stolen. But so do I. That's what we have in common. Yeah, She I loves that's... me. I love me. I mean, it's kind of a match made in heaven. I'm asking this just as a, uh, just as a question. Sure. You, would I be a possibility? I'm, I'm over 35. I was born in the United States. And you're Jewish, which and, and they would love that. I think we could really wrap things up with the, the Jewish vote with you and some of the conservatives who, who still are on the fence about me. I think yes. you alone... Yes would bring in that group of people who these conservatives who say they're the real conservatives and I'm not a conservative because I added $8 trillion to the deficit, which wasn't my fault. I didn't ask for COVID. But but you got us out of it as a... I did. I You know, listen, you know, the vaccine, they told me, they came in, there, sir, 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 we can't have the vaccine for 10 or 12 years. I said, 10 or 12 years, that's impossible. I said, we need it in nine months. And they got the vaccine in nine months. But if you don't want to take the vaccine because of the microchips in it, don't take it. Don't take it. Okay. But if you do, I did it. If you don't, it was somebody else. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I do know what you're saying. So right. I want the credit, but not the blame. That's exactly part of the Trump persona, that you exactly. take no responsibility for anything that goes wrong. And you're proud of that. I'm very proud of that. That is that is what they, they should be teaching at the University of Pennsylvania, where I graduated first in my class at the business school. Take the credit, not the blame. And that's the way it should be. And this is why I get rid of stupid people like Rex Tillerson. He ran Exxon. Big deal. CEO. Who cares? But if you're working under me, you do as I say. Can you believe he called me stupid? Can you believe he called me stupid? What? He's like Fred Flintstone. What does he know? John. <laughs> well, I think a little, I don't want to keep the president, the, the Supreme Leader. Um, 
Hey, I got to say what I wanted to say. So I do want to say on day one, we will solve the war in Ukraine. I talk to uh, Vladdy every day. He's willing to like, wrap this up. It'll be the October surprise in November once I'm back in office. Let me say this, and, and don't, don't shoot the messenger. You're not going to get Mexico to pay for the wall. You know that. I, I, I didn't mean that literally. I didn't mean that literally. Everyone thinks I mean that literally, you know, and Mexico is going to pay for it. How could you misinterpret that? I was kidding. I was kidding. You know what I mean? But we no. will build the wall 2,000 miles long, 55 feet high with a Trump hotel every 100 miles facing the United States. It's going to be fantastic. So that's a great, I can, I can envision that. I can actually picture that if I close my eyes. And by the way, I love the Mexican people. I just want to make this extremely clear. I love the food. I love the culture. I love the Oompa Loompas and the Quasadillas and the Empandas. And the greatest taco bowl is at Trump Tower, which are trying to take away from me, which is absolutely horrible. Everybody cheats on their taxes, folks. I just want to say that. that that's not a bad thing. That, that's what rich people do. You know what I mean? We, gotta, we have a lot of money and we don't want to give it to the government. That's all. You know what's thrown me for the past few months? You don't seem afraid of the possibility that you may be in an orange jumpsuit behind bars. You, you, you don't even seem to be bothered by that possibility. That thought doesn't even enter my head. Doesn't even enter my head. Though people say I'm orange anyway, so I think of all the colors, an orange jumpsuit would be the best option. But you don't worry about that. I don't want Bernie. You've known me a long time. Do I worry about anything, anything no. at all? I no. sleep like a rock three hours a night. Sleep like a rock. Sleep like a rock. I sleep like a rock. Nothing bothers me. And this is why I should be president. All the stress I'm under right now with these six legal cases, this evil, evil woman saying the things I did to her, which I didn't do. If you know what I'm talking about, I don't yep. want to say anything else and go back to court. But if anybody else was under this much stress, they would crack up. They would just, they would just totally go off the deep end. Not me, which proves I should be president. I can handle absolutely any, throw anything at me, throw anything at me and I'll do great. I'll do absolutely fantastic. I can so, handle stress like nobody else. So I am very sex appeal. What would you say, John? I said you're always very composed. That's, that's very true. composed. Very composed. Look at me. Look at me. I've already so, done a round of golf and esteem, and I'm, I'm I feel absolutely fantastic. So we should not worry. You're saying about the end of democracy if you're elected. Oh yeah, no, you should definitely worry about that. I mean, you should definitely yeah. worry about that because listen, I don't want these restrictions on me. I don't okay. want these restrictions on me. I got rid of every single inspector general when I was, no one talks about that, by the way, which is a good thing. Uh, I, I fired all of them. So I don't like oversight. I don't like anybody watching me because Obama was spying on me. We all know that. But I just want to do things my way. And if I'm able to do things my way, okay, and it, sure, you call it a dictatorship, but people will love it. They will love it my way. And then we can put the Constitution back on when, you know, after we fix everything. But we might have to suspend it for a little while, not a long time. But once we suspend it, I'll fix everything. Then we'll turn it back on. It'll be great. You want to end with a very, very short, upbeat message? Absolutely. American. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, you know, I, people always want me to say nice things. So I'm going to say something nice. I want everyone to have a very, very productive day. Even the haters and the losers and all the people that are against me just have a great day because soon I'll be back in office and you'll be in jail. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Mr. President, Mr. Thank Former you. President, Mr. Supreme Leader, Mr. Trump, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You guys were really adequate today. Thank you.